there are many types of relay modules available in the market. Every module is different from others. The circuit architecture, components, PCB design, these are not constants. Because every result can be achieved in many ways. You can use any circuit you like. But in this project, we will be following the circuit architecture that is used in this middle one. Yeah, the black one in the middle. Because in my experience, I have found this to be the most consistent and I have never faced any issue with this in the last years I have used. Now, let's look in this board little closely. As you can see, there are two 5 volt DC relays in the board. So, this is a two channel relay. For simplicity, we will be making a single channel relay in this project. But after you have grabbed the concept well enough, you can make your 4th channel relay or 8th channel relay what you want. Looking at the components, you can see that there are two octocouplers for the relays. Two LED indicators are present on the board to give us the visual indications. Two diodes D1 and D2 are present on the board to protect the circuit from reverse voltage. We will be discussing all these things in detail in the later part of this video so don't be confused with these parts you can also see the engraving of jdv vcc and ground pins on the board transistor q1 and q2 will do the switching part so this is the main components that are present on the module now let me gather all the required things that we need and we will be building this module itself the first and the most important step is to select a suitable relay here we have a 5V DC relay. Now if you want to use this relay board to switch AC appliances like TV, fan or fluorescent tube etc. Then look for the correct AC voltage and current rating that is given on a relay. I live in India and we have a 250V AC supply. So the 7 ampere current at 250V AC will be sufficient for my use. The next thing you will need a general purpose entry and transistor. I am using a 2 n triple 2 2 way transistor that is a very common one but you don't have to worry if you have any other general purpose transistor that has to be a NPN transistor you can use that. Then you need two diodes for protecting the circuit. Any general diodes will do the job. After that you will be needing LEDs. I will be using one red LED as power indicator and a green LED as a status indicator for the relay. Next we need an optocoupler that will be used to isolate the relay module from our microcontroller. The model number of this optocoupler is PC817. It is a very popular optocoupler and very cheap one. You can find it anywhere in the market. We need total of 4 registers with corresponding values that are shown on the video. But keep in mind the values of the register is not very compulsory. Something in between those values will also do the job here. Then we need some male and female jumper headers. This will be used in the input and power ports of the relay module. For the relay terminals, I will be using two terminal blocks that will give us total of four accessible screw terminals. But we will need only three of them. And the last thing, we will need a Vero board on which we will be prototyping the circuit. I am using a single sided dotted Vero board. You can use those with the serial connections. But be sure to cut the path at the required points with a screwdriver or a sharp knife. So these are the main components that you will be needing for making this module on a Vero board. You can find the detailed list in the description of this video as well. Now you need some more accessories for soldering. Obviously, we need to solder this circuit. I am using a 60 watt soldering iron with a pointed end soldering tip. You can use any soldering tip you want as your requirement. You also need some soldering wear, soldering paste, desoldering wick for desoldering some components if you need, tweezers for holding the components in place and a very good quality magnetic wire strippers that will be very helpful. And after gathering all these required components and materials for our project, we will be looking into the circuit and understand the working principle of this relay module. This is the circuit that we will be using today. The main component of this circuit is the relay RL1 that is connected to the battery. The other side of the battery is connected to a bulb. But as you can see the circuit is open now. That's why the bulb will be off. Now the optocoupler PC817 is there in the left hand side of this image. The pin 1 of PC817 is connected to the VCC via current limited register of 1K. The pin 1 is actually an anode of the LED that is present inside the optocoupler. 
the cathode of the LED is connected to the Arduino input via the diode D3. On the other side of the PC817, the pin 4, which is the collector of the photo transistor, is connected to the terminal JDV. Pin 3, that is the emitter of this photo transistor itself, is connected to the base of an another input transistor that we have talked earlier via a 470 ohm resistor. The emitter of that NPN transistor is grounded and the collector goes to one side of the coil. The other side of the coil goes to the same terminal JDV. Now observe the diode D1 that is connected parallel with the coil. The role of this diode is very important here. We will discuss this soon. Except this, there are two LEDs, one red LED for power indication and the second one is for status indicator as we have said earlier. Now let's look at the circuit and how it is going to work. We have told earlier that the relay switch position is off by default and that's why the bulb is also off. Now to turn on the switch in the other direction, we have to provide at least 5 volt power to the coil terminal. Now to work with the same power that is coming for the Arduino, we have to short the terminals VCC and JDV. Now if you sort this terminal, you can see the 5 volts from the Arduino directly falls on the coil side. When you provide high voltage or digital 1 at the in terminal, the diode D3 is in reverse bias. Right? So no current flows after that and the condition of the circuits remains same. This changes when we apply a negative or digital 0 at the in terminal because at that time the diode D3 is in forward bias. Now the LED inside the PC817 is turned on because its anode is already connected to VCC. On the other side, the photoregister gets turned on because the lights from the LED falls on its base. So the collector and the emitter get sorted. So the voltage JDV from the collector comes down to the base of the NPN transistor. A NPN transistor turns on when it gets high voltage that is digital 1 at the base. That's why the transistor is on now and the ground is shifted to the collector. Now you can see that there is a proper 5 volt supply across the coil. So the relay gets enough power and the switch changes its position resulting completing the circuit. The bulb will turn on, the green LED D2 will also be powered and it will receive proper ground on its cathode. So that's how the circuit is working on the relay module. Now let's talk about the diode D1 that we have talked earlier. The diode D1 here is called a flyback diode. Now let me explain why it is called so. The relay coil always acts as an inductor. And the basic property of an inductor says that the current through an inductor cannot change instantaneously. Imagine that the relay is on for some time. Current is flowing through the relay. Suddenly we stop the supply. What will happen? The current can't stop immediately because of the property of the inductor, right? And there is no ground to dissipate the current. The current gets trapped inside the coil and it has no place to go. That generates a very high voltage spike across the coil terminal. The voltage is too high that it breaks all the insulation and provides a path for the current to flow. This will destroy all small electrical components on the circuit. And that's why the diode is important because what the diode does is that it provides an alternate path for the current to go to the power supply. When the input transistor is off and the, and the current is trapped on the coil, the diode acts as a short circuit path for the current to go back to the power supply. So that's why the name flyback is so evident here because the current is going back to the power supply by the diode. As a result, no high voltage spike is generated in the circuit and the circuit stays intact. Here we will be simulating the circuit and visualize the working principle with graphs. In Proteus, I have made the circuit previously. Also, I have attached a square wave generator to provide continuous square wave to the in terminal. Also, I have attached a digital oscilloscope here to see the graphs. Now, I will sort the JDV and VCC terminal to work on the same power. You can also give separate power to both the microcontroller and the relay module if you want a complete isolation. Start the simulation and observe the switching of the relay. It is getting turned on and turned off periodically with the square wave. But to observe it more closely, let me pause the circuit now. In this graph, the top yellow line represents the terminal voltage of the input terminal. The middle blue one indicates the collector voltage of the input transistor. 
the pink line at the last represents the voltage at the bulb terminal you can see when the input terminal voltage is high the collector voltage of the NPN transistor is also high and the relay is off that means the bulb is off next time when the input terminal voltage is low that means digital zero the collector voltage is also low so the ground is shifted to the collector of the NPN transistor now the relay turns on and the bulb glows if you observe the graph properly you can see that the relay turns on only when we provide a digital zero at the input terminal otherwise the relay is off that's why it is called a negative logic circuit that means you have to lower the terminal voltage to turn on the relay and to turn off the relay you have to put back the input terminal voltage to digital one so the simulation is working perfectly as we have predicted and let me make a small breadboard version here to see if the circuit works in real time and if it does then we will be making a final prototype on breadboard This is the final product. This is the final relay module that we have made in this project. This is how it looks from top. You can see there are not many components present on the board. It looks very simple. But from the other side, you can see a lot of complex soldering and routing process involved in this. So it will be my recommendation if you are not comfortable with soldering, then better buy a pre-made module because that will save you a lot of time. Also keep in mind that we will be dealing with high voltage AC. So if you have done something horribly wrong during soldering, it can get pretty bad. It can, it can damage your thousand dollar AC appliances that you own in your house. So be aware of that when trying this. Now label this circuit with pointers for future references. And the circuit is finally ready for testing. To test that, I will be just uploading the blink sketch that is given on the Arduino IDE to our Arduino and I will be connecting the pin 13 of the Arduino to the in port of the module. VCC and ground is supplied from the Arduino itself. JDV and VCC is sorted. On the other side of the relay, I have attached a 1 watt white LED with a 9 volt battery. Normally the circuit is open and the LED is off as you can see. But if we turn on the circuit, the relay should turn on and off every one second as the delay in the code was given as 1000. Yes, the red light is on as a power indicator. The one not LED is flashing every one second. The green LED is also flashing in every one second. So the circuit is working perfectly. This thing also works flawlessly with AC voltage. Here you can see I'm turning on and off a 9 watt LED lamp that is rated for 240 volt. So we have completely made this module from scratch and it is working pretty fine without any problem. That's it in this project. Hope you have grabbed the concept well. Now you can make your own relay module for your DIY projects. I have shown a single channel one here, but you can make your fourth channel or eighth channel relay module, whatever you want. If you have watched this video till now, then please like this video, share this video with your classmates, with your project mates, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel because it's free and it's keep us motivated to produce more and more contents for you guys so thank you for tuning in hope to see you in our next video till then bye